Good morning. My name is Steve. Welcome to the Tuesday Tune. We are here in the Vorsprung workshop in Whistler, and uh, this week we are going to have a bit of a dig inside the RockShox Monarch Plus and the RockShox Super Deluxe Air. The major difference uh, in terms of application is that the Monarch Plus fits the older Imperial sizes and the Super Deluxe fits the new metric sizes. So let's have a quick look at those and see what we find. So here we have the Monarch Plus, uh, has rebound adjuster here, obviously air sprung, uh, and a three position compression adjuster. On the surface, the Super Deluxe that we have here is pretty similar, three position compression adjuster. The rebound adjuster is in a very different position, uh, as you can see here. The equivalent sizes between these two would be a 230 by 65, and a 216 by 63 here. So this only has two millimeters more stroke, but it's uh, 15 millimeters longer. So the idea with the metric spacing uh, is that it gives the designers a lot more space to work with. It means that they can have a bit more overlap in the structure of the shock, uh, make it stiffer, you know, more resistant to bending loads. Also give a bit more space to physically fit in all the features that they want to fit in. Okay, so side by side with the Monarch Plus on the left here and Super Deluxe on the right, we can see a couple of obvious differences. First of all, Monarch Plus has a two-piece air sleeve here. So this is the debonair air sleeve, uh, has separations for the positive chamber and the negative chamber. Uh, you can see the equalization dimples in here. Super Deluxe has a one-piece air sleeve. So they've enlarged the negative chamber by bulging this out a little bit um, you can see the equalization dimple in there and there. Inside the air can on the Super Deluxe, we have this countermeasure spring, which is a coil spring, uh, which is intended to counter the pressure that's generated in the reservoir by the IFP. I'm not a massive fan of this. I think it's a bit of a gimmick. Uh, doesn't really need to be there, but uh, you know, if it's marketable and it sells and whatever, and it doesn't get in the way massively, then okay. So let's have a quick look inside the damping circuits of the Monarch Plus here. So this is the Monarch Plus base valve. So it's pretty simple uh, three position adjuster. So what is happening in this base valve when we flip the lever is that it's got a little cam under the lever here. So when we flip this lever here, it's basically just pushing this needle down in the middle. So in the fully open mode here, uh, this allows quite a lot of oil through the center of the base valve there, as you can see. So when we put it into the trail mode, there's a little plastic pushing. I don't know if we can really quite see it in there, a the little white pushing. This needle engages into that, and then oil can flow through this tiny little hole inside and out the end. So this very small bleed hole here. So that's your you know mid firmness mode. When it's put into the fully firm mode, this needle gets engaged into that plastic bush uh, beyond that little hole there. And that means that no oil can flow through the center of this. All the oil has to then flow through these little entry windows here. And those lead to ports which come out under this shim stack here. So they will peel up this uh, preloaded shim stack. Now you can kind of see the dish in the shim stack there. So these shims are quite heavily preloaded and that's your that's your climb mode, your lockout. There are a couple of limitations with this. First of all, the open mode is extremely open. Virtually nothing will ever flow through the, uh, the shim stack except possibly at extremely, extremely high speeds. Uh, the reason for that is that the Monarch here has a 10 millimeter shaft, which is quite small. Uh, doesn't displace a huge amount of oil. Second thing, this O-ring here does not actually need to be there. So that is there to uh, presumably to prevent oil blow-by, but this piston is clamped tight by the inside of this reservoir here. Uh, and there's constant metal-to-metal -metal contact from two smooth surfaces the whole way around there. So that, uh, that O-ring is kind of redundant. We see in the Super Deluxe, there's no more O-ring. It's the, uh, the same kind of setup, but uh, yeah, they just replaced that with a crush wing, crush washer, which is uh, makes a bit more sense. Yeah, that is that. This, on the return valve, oil comes through these uh, 12 ports here, these little ones you can see around the outside, and it will lift up 
this check valve shim under here. So that bends up, allows oil back through. Now on the rebound adjuster here, we have this little adjuster needle on the inside here, and that's basically blocking off uh, a flow path that comes in through here. So in compression, oil is flowing up the middle of this hole here, as well as through this main piston. So it will flow in through these little ingress ports here, uh, bend the compression shim stack open, and fill the chamber between the main piston and the seal head here. Uh, and what's displaced by the shaft goes through the center of the shaft, up through the center of this other rod uh, that's sealed against the, uh, the top of the shaft, as well as being sealed against this little white crush ring here. Goes through the middle of this port and comes out into the reservoir. Um, now what prevents it from getting into uh, coming through here and then back into the rebound chamber is this little check valve here. So this does have fully checked uh, compression rebound behavior which means that the rebound adjustment does not actually affect the compression behavior. Now this main piston here, this one has actually been revalved, this is not stock valving at all. The stock uh, rebound valving is preloaded, it's very heavily preloaded, which means that the stock rebound valving in the medium configuration uh, never actually opens. So you basically have a uh, ported damper in rebound if you're running the medium or higher uh, rebound tune. Compression tune is quite linear, quite soft. Um, even in the firmest configuration. By contrast, let's have a quick look at what we have in here. So here we have slightly different shaped seal head as we can see. We have this little top hat thing here. And so this basically prevents the thing, um, it prevents the piston getting as close to the seal head or top out. and means that there's a more overlap distance between the bushing and the seal head and this piston here, which is good. It stiffens the thing up. This was kind of necessary, on, particularly on certain bikes. Um, the Monarch Pluses were not the most robust thing out there in terms of their ability to withstand side loads. Uh, certain frames that put a lot of side load on them would uh, cause you know, air to burp and whatnot. And so this has this uh, check valve here, very conventional rebound adjuster that comes straight up the middle. Um, it is still using a similar, uh, you know, twin tube system in here that's forcing oil in compression that's displaced by the shaft down the center of this tube and into the reservoir via the base valve. Uh, base valve is a little bit different, we'll look at that in a sec. The main difference is to note though, we have a uh, half inch shaft instead of a 10 mil, so it's displacing more oil into the, uh, into the reservoir via the base valve. It's able to generate higher damping forces from the base valve uh, with lower pressures. Uh, and on that note, the wall thickness of this is quarter of a mil thicker than the wall thickness on the Monarch Plus. Now, the reason for that, uh, <laughs> multiple reasons, they can get more seal squeeze using the same size air sleeve seals. Uh, it stiffens the body here as well, which is also important because if you try to get a ton of uh, pressure out of the base valve, you can actually get enough expansion of that body on the Monarch Plus uh, that you get piston blow by. Now, interestingly, um, these things do actually use the same piston. This piston here is the same in the Super Deluxe as it is in the Monarch Plus. Disappointingly, this still has a uh, preloaded rebound stack. I'm not really sure exactly why they persist with these, but they do. It does have a linear compression stack though, um, and the rebound adjuster system is much better. It's also completely checked. There is absolutely zero flow through the rebound adjuster um, in compression, which is, you know, at least theoretically a benefit, if not, you know, in practice. Air volume spaces are a bit different in this. So they have a system more like what Fox have been using for years um, with the spacer clipping in around the eyelet as compared to the, uh, the bands that would go around the air can on the Monarch Plus. Also have a polymer IFP. Um, it's a tapped and threaded acetyl IFP. Interesting tapping threads into plastic, but I suppose it should not really be under much pressure. 
Um, now these old metal IFPs, this one is actually pretty much in pretty good condition, but you can see some wear marks around there. Um, and it's very common for that to wear right through the anodizing. Eventually that eats the, uh, the reservoirs there. We make upgraded uh, acetyl IFPs for these as well. Prevent that issue. Let's have a bit more of a look at the base valve here. So this uh, Super Deluxe has a spring-loaded little spool. Um, and this is pretty, pretty nicely machined, this thing. Quite a fan. And so you can see here the profile of that. Now this still has a similar type of uh, plastic sleeve in there for this to fit into. Um, but it has, interestingly, we basically now have three completely separate circuits. So in the open mode, this little gap here sits over the uh, sits over the little plastic bush, and so oil can get around that and uh, out the end. When you put it into the um, the mid mode, then push that in a bit further, then it starts to block off uh, at this end, but it allows oil out through uh, this piston here. So this piston here has a shimmed valve on it. In the firmest mode, it only allows oil through the preloaded shim stack. You can see this is a fairly thick shim stack um, that's got a fair amount of preload on it on this main piston. That means you can have a firm climb mode, um, but still actually have a shimmed valve the rest of the time. Now the open variant of that is still quite open. So mathematically, there are a couple of substantial differences between these two. So the 10 mil shaft on the Monarch Plus only has 62% of the cross-sectional area and therefore the oil displacement of the Super Deluxe. That means that it's harder for the base valve to be effective um, and it has to generate more pressure to generate the same force. So the base valve in these is not able to do as much as easily. Um, and the design on the Monarch Plus out of the box is a little bit crude. Um, Super Deluxe is definitely taken it up a notch there. So with the Super Deluxe, they've made it possible to get uh, a bit more damping from the base valve without requiring crazy high pressures. Uh, they've stiffened the body to prevent the elasticity of the body being an issue there and to give it more seal squeeze. And you can see due to that higher oil displacement, we have a, a larger reservoir um, on the Super Deluxe than on the Monarch Plus. So it's a larger diameter. It needs to account for more oil flow. So it's pretty interesting to see the evolution uh, from one shock to another. I mean, obviously the Super Deluxe is a physically much larger shock. It's a bit heavier as well. Um, but, you know, you can see why they've gone about things the way that they have as well. One of the things that's quite interesting about uh, these two shocks is that you never be able to compare them back to back because they're not made in the same sizes. Uh, there were some pretty funny reviews getting around uh, when the Super Deluxe first came out touting its uh, superiority and saying, you know, metric is so much better, when in reality the, there are confounding factors there that are quite substantial, different leverage rates, for example. A lot of these shocks were tested back-to-back uh, -back on the transition patrol, but when the upper link was changed, so was the leverage rate. Uh, they became more progressive, and that means you inherently have a softer initial stroke and a firmer end stroke. So a lot of those comparisons were realistically pretty bogus. Anyway, hope you guys found that somewhat interesting uh, and informative and it really leads to a deeper insight of what's inside these shocks uh, and how the, how the two compare and you know, how the design process has evolved for those two. Anyway, till next week, I'll see you then.